What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to discuss how Calvin Air took Tall, the mining company, private. So earlier this week, there was an announcement that Calvin essentially purchased the outstanding shares, which is about 62% of the company. He already had 38.5% for about $26 million. He bought out all the shares at a approximately 40% premium. So I think the previous price was like 70 cents Canadian. Now it's a dollar that he's buying folks out at, out at. And the justification they gave was it'll give them basically freedom to scale up the business and acquire more capital going forward. Whereas that would have been cumbersome with being a publicly traded company. Um, so while that, that move is interesting, um, I think the first thing we can discuss is how it does kind of wreck the people who are, were holding long term. And that's a lot of the feedback I've seen. So, you know, I, re I remember when that stock was three, four dollars and obviously getting bought out at one dollar Canadian, which I think is like 70 cents or something. I, I don't know the exchange rate right now um, is is locking in massive losses. Right. However, if you had bought the bottom, um, you just got made for point four. 1.4x return. So, but I don't know if, if anyone's out there doing that. So, um, it is, it's probably a sad move for them that, you know, to lock in that loss. Um, I'm not clear. I saw some discussion. I'm not clear if that, those people still have an opportunity to invest going forward, but it is Calvin does control 100% of the company now. So, um, it is an interesting move. I, I, I want to talk about more about the, you know, I've been speculating on what is a long term plan here and, you know, some of the mining economics. So that's what we'll discuss here. So um, what's interesting, I think, that's going on right now is, you know, in the previous videos, I spoke about how crypto prices have been stable for the last four or five months, which is unheard of. Right. I mean, if you've been in this involved in this for any period of time, if you go to the average, I'm sure it's different, but pretty much it feels like. BTC has basically been $20,000 for like 150 days. I mean, it's just usually there's like a big up or a big down. There's some volatility there because it's just that's the history of it. And as such, that is the same for other cryptos, you know, outside of some other ones like ETH. You know, you have some decouple pumps there because of the merge or whatever. And, you know, BSV tracks with BTC. So it's basically been 50, you know, now 46 or whatever. For the last five months with that the difficulty on btc has been rising and i find that interesting I, i'm interested to see what people think about that because just looking at it me as a person who does not mind who doesn't fully understand those economics um you know i do theoretically but obviously i'm not a miner that doesn't make much sense to me because if the prices are stable then we shouldn't have you, the difficulty shouldn't be rising right for example we saw a miner is basically about to go bankrupt core scientific in the u.s and their stock is cratered um eventually they'll start selling asics right because they got to liquidate to pay off whatever liabilities they have and apparently you know they had leverage and exposure to celsius and all this crazy stuff um for them um if they're levered up chances are there's other companies that have the same meaning that you would expect with these dire economic conditions, rates rose again yesterday by the Fed, the Fed funds rate, that you would expect, or the other day, you would expect uh, levered companies to have to liquidate assets, meaning that you should see hash power come offline, not online. And I just find it interesting that the difficulty is going up, which implies hash power is being added to the network, right? Um, but the prices are not going up. You, you should see that as prices rise or you think price is going to go up. And I just, you know, I've been I've doubled down and maintaining that. I don't see any catalyst for crypto prices to rise in the near term, especially um, given that rates are probably going to continue to go up, which is going to delever a lot of these people. You know, if you had outstanding debt, bonds, that sort of stuff or betting on, you know, longing crypto with leverage. I mean, that's just a one way trip to pound town. Um, so what I mean is that, yeah, so that, that's interesting. I mean, perhaps my ignorance just doesn't know why that's happening. 
Um, someone did make an interesting comment on one of my recent videos saying there might just be too many ASICs out there, meaning that the market did not anticipate BTC going down and staying stable. But the production, obviously, that's capital intensive, has continued. Now you just have too many ASICs chasing too few coins. And, you know, that's possible, right? Because if you have, you know, digital lead, as I said, that can't really, you know, it's dependent on that fiat price, then when that is not volatile enough, it it's kind of fundamental how it's going to drive it up. So that could be it. So Tall takes this move near the bottom, right? I mean, that's the that's where we're at is the bottom. So, um, you know, I've spoke about how rich folks, billionaires do this type of thing. They They scoop up at the bottom. And at the cheap, you know, they don't buy the top and this move is done in that manner. So, um, you know, they might want to hide what they're doing. I mean, that's what they said straight up. Right. And then the nature of the transaction is private. So to take it private. So, um, you know, mining more BTC, not having to answer to anybody with a BA or a B, uh, or anything like that. Not that anyone was. But um, yeah. So I think that. You know, maybe he he or the people running the company see something that the rest of us don't. I mean, obviously, they're in the trenches there. Um, I don't have, you know, based off what we saw with the empty block miner situation and how it was handled. I mean, I don't know that we have the most knowledgeable people about mining running the company. So, you know, maybe this move is part of that to get some of those people in more easily. You know, you don't have to do voting and all that stuff. You basically just make a top down decision like this is how it's going down. Uh, with that said, Calvin had 40 percent previously, so it's not like he couldn't do that before. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, it's um, I think it's just hard to say, man. I mean, the mining stuff is going to be. You know, I'm going to be watching if ASIC prices are going to get to continue to fall because of what I mentioned before, the kind of deleveraging that's going to happen, that has happened and is going to continue to happen. And, you know, those prices, you know, being, you know, you can get one for like 2900 like Gorilla Pool's been saying. And apparently those used to be worth near 5x um, at the top, obviously, when BTC was 70k last November, about a year ago. So, um, yeah, I just... I don't know what they're going to do moving forward. I mean, it sounds like they're going to try to get more hash power. Um, but again, yeah, I guess because if if you think this is the bottom or we're close to it, that's this is when it's time to buy. I mean, l looking at it objectively, right? If you're if you're a crypto bull, forget all the narratives and stuff. If you're just objective, you don't know what's going on in the space. You just like digital currencies, blah, blah, blah. If you're looking in, you're thinking, OK, it's going to come back. You know, we're we're getting your downside risk is decreasing. If I'm just I'm not saying this is true. I'm just saying if you're an outsider looking in, that's what you're thinking, right? 70k, 20k. It's been that way for a long time. ASIC prices are going down. I mean, even I'll consider purchasing a few, right? So that means that if, if you have capital, this is a good time to buy, most likely, right? Even if it drops another 50%. If it if let's say an ASIC was 14k last year, it's like okay. You know, if it goes down to fifteen hundred, whatever you think it's going to come back, right? So it's a good time to buy from that perspective. That might be motivation to do this, so you get freedom to basically just scoop up stuff without having to deal with all the controls that a public company has. That's probably what's going on. Um, so yeah, it's just unfortunate for the people that were loyal. Um, you know. Loyal is can be synonymous. Markets can be synonymous with bag holders, but um, you know, on one hand, folks got to take responsibility. On the other, you know, it kind of shows you, man. I mean, these guys are going to play these games, and um, people, the common man, is just at the whims of it. So that's always the risk that you take. And you know, folks, especially with the greater thing that's going on, you know, on one hand, it is a bailout, right? Because it is a forty percent premium, but you know, when people buy at the top and hold to the bottom, I mean, at the end of the day, they got to take responsibility. However, I can see that being construed as, oh, you know, those billionaires just moving stuff around on the chessboard and us common men are just going to pound town. And I, I would get that sentiment. I mean, I didn't have any of the stock, so um, I don't have any subjective opinion there.
So, yeah, uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say. I think it's, um, yeah, I think the thing to watch, though, is how, what happens with the difficulty on BTC, what happens to Tall's hashing power, but we're probably going to, I mean, I think a lot of it is unknown anyway. So, um, you know, maybe folks can comment on that. I don't, I don't read their statements or whatever, but, you know, maybe they report how much they have. Well, now they don't. They don't have to report anything to anybody. So uh, maybe it's, you know, to be able to maneuver more easily, mine more BTC, right, which makes more sense, honestly. Um, not if the difficulty keeps going up, though, right? So, yeah, so that's it. Um, and then, yeah, watch how much they have on BESV and what they do there. And um, watch the ASIC prices. I think that's key. And, I, you know, I hope Gorilla Pool can somehow benefit from this. All right, guys, that's what I want to say. Let me know feedback. I'll see y'all in the next one.